Hello everybody and welcome to our video interpretation of our explanation of unilateralism versus multilateralism as viewed by these six logics of American foreign policy. And as you can see, we've used these lovely kitchen appliances to represent where various aspects of the, or where these various logics lie on the uh, unilateral versus, versus multilateral spectrum. So we start with um, one of our uh, more unilateral favoring policies, which is this uh, lovely new moon cup, go team Edward. Um, we're going to set this kind of here. Now, hegem hegemonism is, defi is uh, typically defined as the logic which dictates that America plays a uh, leader, uh, a, a sort of leadership role in the world uh, in terms of, um, and, uh, and this, this uh, depends on us having basically the best of everything. For example, the best economic, uh, technical, and military power. Uh, and then once we have this power, we must inf we must use it to enforce uh, our rules as a leader. Uh, we must have the will to provide leadership. Um, and we must be able to follow through on what we say we'll do on the international arena in order to have credibility. Um, and also, uh, to show that we have um, shared interests with the groups that we work with so that we can continue to work with them. Um, uh, in, additionally, uh, the logic of hegemony states that there is a moral obligation. Uh, at, since the United States is the most powerful nation in the world, it also has the, uh, it also is also obliged to uh, help out and uh, fix conflicts uh, in wh where they spring up, uh, whether that be through military action, which usually is. Uh, so anyway, and now to explain uh, the logic of realism, we have another member of our group. This cute little flask is our realist. Realists believe because there is no effective world government, international relations is inherently a competition for power necessary to guarantee national security. Um, the most important power is military power, and our foreign policy must first attend to and um, pay foremost attention into maintaining and balancing that power. The United States has no national interest beyond maintaining the global balance of power, and they also have no moral obligations to the rest of the world because morality has no place in international relations. <laughs> okay, um, next is isolationism, which is the Princess Martini glass. Um, the objective of this logic is to maximize the United States autonomy, so it's clearly unilateralist. Um, this logic believes that collaboration constrains the United States unless the United States is powerful enough to dictate the coalition strategy and tactics, which would then be kind of known as false multilateralism. So this is why the logic is unilateralist. Um, furthermore, the United States is not powerful enough to dictate um, over the coalition strategy, and even if it were, it would be able to act unilaterally and would not need collaborators. So it's unilateralist. Okay. Okay, now, uh, sort of one of the more unnecessary appliances we have here, this egg beater is representative of, representative of the poly, uh, uh, logic of uh, uh, liberalism. There, that's, those are the words I was looking for. Um, and uh, the reason that uh, you really could place Mr. Egg Beater here anywhere on this spectrum is because liberalism, uh, the, the core premise of liberalism is that uh, we spread American democratic ideals. Uh, now, uh, how we go about this through unilateralism or multilateralism is pretty much irrelevant to uh, people who, uh, to uh, supporters of the liberal mindset. Uh, it just depends on whichever approach seems to be furthering U.S. Uh, democratic ideals in whatever situation. So we say goodbye to the sake. This friendly looking ice cream scooper is our liberal internationalist. This ice cream scooper is all about multilateralism. It believes that national security no longer is primarily a military matter like the realist, but includes protecting the United States from dangerous side effects of interdependence, such as global pandemics, pollution, reducing the level of world armaments, and accelerating economic growth in poor nations. 
National security can only be promoted through global multilateral cooperation. Global cooperation requires effective international institutions, so the United States must work with and support international organizations and international law. The U.S. also has a legitimate leadership role, but it must be leadership without dominance. And the United States also has a moral obligation to contribute substantially to solving global problems. Okay. Last but not least, we have radical anti-imperialism, which doesn't really belong on the spectrum at all. This is <laughs> radical anti-imperialism. Um, it doesn't belong on the spectrum because it's very critical of any action of the United States. In principle, this logic would favor multilateralism, but in practice, United States actions in multilateralist settings are seen as false multilateralism. But this logic can't be unilateralist either because it opposes unilateral action as to promote imperialist interests over the common good. So, bye. You're going to be so pissed at me, but I.